thousand. Wow, this is crazy, insane. This is my post. I was sitting here. Is this the first time you're here since then? Yes, it's not easy. It's weird that they're not here. It's very weird being here in the command center without them, not being able to talk to them, ask for advice. It's not really sinking in. Nahalaw's military base has become one of the symbols of the October 7th failure, the place where the field observers were ignored by the brass and left to fend for themselves. They had to fight off hundreds of Nukba terrorists with almost nothing but their bare hands. From here, the field observers alerted about Hamas's plan before it came to pass, but no one would listen. And next to the great failure, bravery of a few in the face of many. For the first time since October 7th, the survivors are returning to the command center to recount the events of those fateful hours. It's a complex and difficult chain of events that tell a story about courage and darkness. This place was our home. In the months before, lived here day and night. This takes me back to that time. His command center had no dull moments. It was always full of people, noisy, loud, full of laughter. Now, the silence here is weird, scary. When it went down, the silence were blurring. Now, the infiltration started. We constantly alerted to activate infiltration protocol. I know Paul. We were in here. This is the command center desk with all the computers and the radio. Only about 30 minutes after that, we learned that terrorists have managed to infiltrate the sector and the communities and the base here. They shot all the cameras and the visually triggered firing system. We had nothing on our screens, no visibility, no electricity. Everything was dark. In the face of Hamas's assault, those who defended the base were a few soldiers. In accordance with military regulations, field observers don't carry weapons. At around 8, Yochai Duhan and Nimrod, their soldier Itai Ron and Ibrahim Karuba, the tracker, they came in to update us. They were here, the four of them, decided how to operate in this situation. They left each time in a way that allowed them to cover each other. They came in to update us, saying, I killed this many, I killed that many, that if we have an idea of the number of terrorists infiltrating, we would know how many were left. At some point, it got too dangerous to be here. They were outside, all around, everywhere. We got everyone to go into the office back there. At around 12.30, we were all inside the office, around 20 people. Smoke started engulfing the room. I said, we have to get out of here. I opened the door. I told them I can't see anything because of the smoke. 
People were suffocating, coughing. We knew we didn't have much time. I tried to stay with Yochai and Itai. And the last thing I heard Yochai say was, the terrorists are burning down the command center. And after that, I never saw him again. Itai's mother. We can tell you that they were heroes. They fought right here. They left each time in a way that allowed them to cover each other. Each time they came out here, they managed to take out terrorists that were there, there and there. They went out, took down terrorists, came back in, back and forth for hours. That's how they protected the field observers and the rest of us in the command center. Most of the time, Itai was covering this door, and Nimrod and Haruba were going back and forth in between. So in fact, none of the terrorists managed to get inside. None got in. They tried to get in the whole time. At one point, they were right here at the door. They shot them, took them out, and a knife went flying through, this big. After that, they realized that there was a big group outside, so the four of them went out, and they succeeded in taking down three or four terrorists. Nimrod told me that he and Itai were there, and Yohai was here. He said it was towards the end of it, because they had no ammunition. He said at that point, they had about 10 bullets. It was after they came to you to take your ammunition. And one terrorist tried to get in, and they killed him with the knife. A terrorist came in with a knife. Nimrod jumped on him. Then Itai strangled him and finished him off. Nimrod was with the knife, and Itai used his bare hands. After about three or four hours of fighting, the terrorist threw in a hand grenade. Everyone ran back and laid on the floor. The grenade exploded. That's when we knew they have us. That if we stay here, if they do that again, some of us will die. Another grenade was tossed in. Yohai pushed Nimrod out of the way and leaned in on top of the grenade. The grenade didn't go off. It was a dud. It's insane that he literally jumped on top of the grenade to save his friends. He didn't know it was a dud. Well, that's who he was. What Karuba did here was incredible. He took charge of the situation. He decided, everyone, now we go outside. We have to kill all the terrorists, and if we die, so be it. We die for the state of Israel. He loved the army. He loved his country. That's how he was raised. Because he speaks Arabic, he told them in Arabic, we will not surrender. We will not wave a white flag. We will not give up. We will fight for our blood until the last minute. And that's what they did. From what I heard, they threw grenades into the command center. And from what we heard, he was in the command center and died in the command center, protecting the soldiers that were there with him. It was a really big explosion. Someone yelled, run to the bathroom. We counted to 10. And we started making our way out. Did you try to get the people behind you out? You just get out. You can't see. You can't breathe. I had a flashlight and still couldn't see. These 30 feet seem like 300 feet. You try to feel your way because you can't see anything. I can feel people coming in behind me. I grab the window, start bending it, until I manage to break it. I toss it aside. Ilan is in front of me. I push her out. I get here. The door is open. I make it out and fall down on the floor. I came out right after him. I was looking for a light, because I knew a light means window. So I looked for a light, then I jumped. I helped her out. I pulled her out. Nimrod went out from the other stall. He is the only one that got out that way. 
אני חורבה ודוכה ניסינו לכבות את השריפה עם הטף. בשלב הזה כבר לא ראינו כלום. אז אני יצאתי, אני יצאתי כבר... הייתי חצי גמור. ומשם... After that, no one else made it out. We no longer hear coughing or yelling. At least I didn't. There are 20 more women in there with you. You need to understand everything is exploding around you. And you say, if I get out through the window, I will be shot. If I stay here, I will suffocate. Which is better? We decided to get out through the window. We knew if we are lucky, we might make it out through the window. And there won't be terrorists waiting there. We finally decided to go through the window. That day, 15 officers and soldiers were killed in that command center. Because of Yochai, Nitai, and Ibrahim's bravery, seven survived, but all the rest perished. Seven field observers who were on shift, Yael, Maya, Roni, Shira, and Shirel, their two commanders, Yam and Adi, and their officer Shir, as well as the three operation sergeants, Shirel, Osher, and Daniel, and Idan, the communications officer. Weekends are the hardest. What goes through your mind? Sometimes it's small things, like when I need to drive to Ra'anana. So I think, oh, I'll text Cheryl. Cheryl won't answer. Cheryl is dead. Stuff like that. Just that they are gone. I can text them, talk to them. People use the term escaping. We didn't escape. We survived. I joined the army to defend my country. If I need to, I will die for my country. But it's a problem, sending out field observers with no weapons, no weapons training to a place like this. And in that situation, it determined their fate. They were drafted just a short while ago. Is there guilt? And... That's a complicated question. I can't believe no one else made it out. It's a difficult thought. I believe it's something we all carry with us. You're not abandoned here. This was our mission. We were here to defend the communities, the civilians, all the people who were murdered here, the forces out there, everyone here fought with their blood until the very last bullet, for everyone, for them, and for us. There were so many terrorists. We were a few against many. It's inconceivable. I can't do this. Look what they've done. It's unbelievable that there were people in here. It's just horrible, horrible. They did not sit here waiting to die. They were in it, trying to push through, trying to save people. It makes me feel good to see that it wasn't all for nothing, that people are alive because of them. We are very proud of him. I would have been so happy to have him back, but he did what he had to do. Looking at the walls, you can see there was a fierce battle. For hours, they fought with determination, and I say this with my experience as a combat officer. They did not roll over. If not for them, the terrorists would have come in here and killed us all. They saved us every step of the way. I'm only here because of them. We would have been masquerade. They save us. People say there was no fight here, when in fact, there were four fighters that protected everything. 
שבאמת הגנו על הכל. It's hard for me to imagine what he went through in his last minutes when they told them to surrender and they said, we will never surrender. I think at that moment, they knew it was the end. When they tell you to surrender and you say, never. 